The Hyper Electric 26 inch is an aluminum frame mountain bike with full electric assist and it's not at all what I expected it to be. I'm Eric, welcome to the Make Me Lab. So this being my first e-bike, I did a lot of research and looked at a lot of different models, most of which were well out of my price range, so I had to wait until I came across this particular unit from Walmart. At the time of purchase, it was $798 in Canadian, that's significantly less for my American friends, and for that price, it's pretty hard to even make an electric bike. I pulled the trigger, ordered it from their website, and it arrived just like this. One big honking box with a pretty cool bike inside. The packaging was more than sufficient, no damage to anything. They took the time to put plastic caps over any of like the ends of the axles and over the levers and stuff. Lots of foam all over, so I was pretty happy to see all that. They took they took the shipping seriously. This is it's a lot of money. This is nearly a thousand dollars. So if it would have arrived all banged up, I would have been pretty dismayed. But that was not the case. Everything was in wonderful condition. Foam and paper and zip ties and plastic wraps all over the place. This is the longest part of the entire assembly is just going ahead and getting all this protections off of there. Good problem to have. And through the magic of video editing, it's assembled. This only took maybe 20 minutes. Uh, there's not much to it. You're just putting the bars on with four Allen head bolts, the seat on with a single bolt, the pedals on with just any adjustable wrench that you have. And that's pretty much it. The battery came pretty much discharged as expected. So I went ahead and charged that. You have to charge it in the on position on the battery itself. I'm assuming that that livens up their battery monitoring system, brings it online to balance the cells. And before even riding, it was clear that the derailleur at the back was set way off. No wonder people have problems with the chain staying on these things in some of the reviews. So easy fix. It's beyond the scope of this video, though. I'll post a link down below to a video that will help you out with adjusting that. Now this is inside the frame up above the battery with one of the covers removed. This is the controller box that actually can, does your speed control. This uh, was the only major shortcoming of the bike that I found. There was no mounting in here and it was just banging around. I could hear that just when I set the bike on the floor. So of course it would drive me nuts out on the road. Easy fix, I just used some of the packing material from the box. My first time out with it, I truly had a blast. Powered up the battery and away I went. And before I knew it, I was many kilometers from home. I'm pretty happy with the way everything performed for the first run. The shocks on the front were pretty good. Actually, I was kind of impressed. They're not as good as my rock shocks on my other bike, but not bad. The brake cables are continuing to stretch in. I'm having to adjust those pretty much every ride still. The chain is definitely stretching in. I've had to adjust the derailleur a couple of times, but overall I'm pretty impressed. This is a pedal assist bike, meaning it doesn't have a throttle lever or twist throttle. You have to get power by pedaling, but you don't have to put effort in. You don't have to put much energy in. You just have to rotate the pedals and trigger the sensor. There's a cadence sensor on the crank. So then you just get the amount of power back out of it that you've selected on the handlebars on the control panel. It's, it's really easy. You don't have to put in any effort at all if you don't want to. On high assist, this thing flies. It, it just zooms too fast. In fact, it's almost uh, not as enjoyable because you're your ride is just moving too quickly to kind of see the scenery, if that makes sense. Loose gravel and rough terrain are no problem. The tires are not well suited for major off-roads. We'll cover that in the upcoming video where I do all my add-ons on this thing and take it to different places. But here you can see it does pretty good at some pretty rough terrain. Dealing with train tracks, no problem. And it doesn't spin out. I don't feel like I'm out of control or anything. The power is smooth enough and predictable enough that I have no problem problems and then you just blast down the trails and enjoy the summer evening.
Some places you're going to want to walk the bike, like these loose rocks and stuff that are quite large. I just walk it down no problem and the brakes are, are well controlled. Going up these kind of inclines is no problem. There's a button on the handlebars, a, a six kilometer mode. It just takes the load off the bike when you're walking it and kind of moves under its own weight. So all you do is steer it. And, ah, this thing is just wonderful. I'm seeing things I haven't seen for for years because it, it took me a little too much effort to get there so with this I just hit the trail and go This episode brought to you in part by PCB Way. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts and assembly as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. After a few rides, there was definitely a few things I had to deal with, one of which the most important being the brakes here. I disassembled this so you can see this through bolt, this Phillips head through bolt is what adjusts the spring pressure on your brakes. These on all four were completely backed out with almost no spring pressure on the brake itself, which means the brakes weren't returning to center and would drag. This is a very, very easy fix. You just thread these in with your screwdriver until you get the ample amount of spring pressure and then you can even balance them from one side to the other because the the cable will hold a little bit of tension different from one side to the other so tighten the side that needs to be pulled out further and the brake will release further on that side and center more and then your brakes will stop dragging it's super super easy you can pretty much just wind all four phillips screws in until there's quite a bit of tension on them and you'll be just fine. If you end up having to remove that bolt like I did, make sure you put some Loctite on it. This is not something you want coming out on your ride. We're all set. The tire spins free, brakes apply quickly and evenly. I'm super happy with this. The performance is actually just fine on these. Brakes are something you need a lot of on this bike. You're going to use them often. If you haven't already, make sure you check out our Discord link down below where you can chat live with myself and lots of other makers from around the world on any topic you wish. Overall, would I recommend this bike to others? Absolutely. In fact, my father and his wife have currently purchased one each of their own as well and they're inbound as of the time of shooting this video. These are absolutely wonderful for the price. This is not a perfect bike. This is not a $3,000 bicycle, but it is a lot of bike for the price. It's decent quality components. Stuff is easy enough that I can upgrade it. 
In my next video on this bike, we're going to add a whole bunch of upgrades to it. Some, some nifty things that you may be familiar with, some things you might not be familiar with, but at the end of it all, I am really happy with where the bike sits with all my mods and my additions. This thing is a pleasure to ride and is just ready to go at a moment's notice. I just go out, hit the trail or hit the roads or go across town to run an errand. It's, it's great. I'm finally making the transition where this might be easier than jumping in my vehicle, at least in the summertime. All the relevant links will be posted down below. Hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one. Cheers guys.